Hey guys, welcome back to Texas Yacht. We are at a new place tonight. This one is actually interesting because the wheat field we used to be hunting is just back here. Um, so it's, that's the wheat field we haven't been as successful as with the other one. But um, we've seen a lot of hogs around here. And pretty often we actually had the, the case where um, hogs would come in the far corner down there and they come either from this property or they go back to this property. Now we are on this property. And the story behind that is pretty, pretty interesting too. Greg got a call from the farmer we work with just recently and said, uh, the lady who lives here uh, wants us to come out. So we met with the owner here and uh, talked about you know, the do's and don'ts, but also she gave us a little bit of the backstory. And what happened is basically beginning of this month, so right now it's end of June, um, June 3rd or 4th, um, her dogs were actually attacked by hogs. So she has five dogs around here. One is a little older one, but the four younger ones basically just go out in the pack and uh, try to keep the hogs off her, uh, from her house basically, because I mean, they're definitely on the property, but trying to keep them away from the house. And uh, June 3rd or 4th, uh, they all got, got back to the house basically, and they all had some sort of wound. And one was pretty cut open pretty bad actually, um, on its uh, stomach or on the bottom um, to the point where I think, as far as I understood, the, even the intestines were um, right there. Um, but he got all stitched up and healing fine. All the other dogs had some sort of cuts too. So uh, she got to the point where like, okay, this is ridiculous, right? We need to do something about it. Um, and they reached out to us. So now we're here. Um, we get a little bit more of the backstory. And if you haven't noticed, I don't know if you see in the video, but Micah, for the first time I've ever seen it, is wearing his snake guards. And uh, um, this, this property used to be called the, uh, the rattlesnake farm. All the dogs have been bitten before. She showed me a wound on one of them, big old cut wound up here on his, on the, right above his eye. Um, they get bitten regularly. Yeah. They had folks from the rattlesnake roundup out here. And they came out and uh, went out in the, in the back side of the, the field, basically, and she wasn't really sure. You didn't tell me that. No, uh, what are they doing? You know, did they get some yet? And one person came back to the house and I guess got the snake bite kit. And so she asked, mm. so did you guys get something yet? Oh yeah, we have 13. In 15 minutes, they got 13 rattlesnakes out here. Nice. And there's like two or three tanks on here. So they have water moccasins, they have rattlesnakes, hogs, so, uh, I'm wearing snake guards anyways, all the time, but so now my guys... Uh, I never do, but tonight, yeah. Yeah, I just don't want to take any risk, right? <clears throat> it's not, not worth the risk. But uh, yeah, so uh, quite a few trails, a few tanks in this place. Um, there's uh, trees further over there. Uh, we are getting access to the property over there as well. There's actually one power pole out here and uh, you can see tracks just going to this power pole from all directions. And around the power pole, um, kind of like a mud puddle because they, they're rubbing against the pole. There's a uh, creosote, I think, yeah. right? Uh, on these poles, so they, they rub against it. The creosote helps them to keep the bugs away and stuff. Um, so this should be good. We have properties now around here, all over the place where we have access to. There's a big cornfield up here. Um, tons of, of corn actually pushed down more than I saw just recently. So there's lots of activity. The question right now is, are we going to be here for the, in the right time? Yeah. You know, be, we have, today was over 100 degrees, at least yeah. my thermometer at home was over 100. So they might be coming out late, but uh, we'll, we'll see, I guess. Mix it cover too. It's uh, pigweed, milkweed, hogweed, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But then we're going to plant those peach trees. So we've got these little berms that are probably two feet high with that growth. So it's yeah. harder to see. It is cut in rows, but. Yeah, they cut us some rows in there, which is nice. But yeah, these, these berms are actually taller than they look from, from an area mm -hmm. view. But uh, we'll, we'll figure out. We put some corn down in one of the cut lanes just to see if we can and draw them in the, in the one spot more concentrated. But chances are with the cornfield up there, they might not care much about the corn on the ground. All right, I guess let's go check it out and see what we can do.
so we got surprised by a storm and the, I guess the lightning, yes you can hear the lightning radio but um, so we walked around quite a bit um, there's one one cut lane uh, we used that to, to travel around but um, we didn't see any hogs just walking around but we did run the uh, HP bullet and we ran Sal Hysteria first and then uh, Chow Time for a little bit but the last one we ran was the the boar magnet and uh, I mean I knew that there's, there's a few boars out there um, uh, that's actually one of the places where we shot the biggest boar so far I figured we'd give it a chance and uh, sure enough one boar came in but he was uh, he was a smaller size, I thought, average size, I would say. I mean, definitely not nothing north of 220 or something, but uh, he didn't have a good visibility of that boar. He saw only the ears popping up. Uh, I saw more of him. I saw basically the upper half of his whole body, and uh, he was looking at me. So ears were up, he was looking at me. Um, I just uh, didn't think we get we get you know a lot more opportunities. I went for it, uh, aimed for a shoulder area, and it, um, it was a hit. I mean, you could tell by the sound of the impact that there was a hit. But he took off into the tree line, so we went after him, tried to find him, and uh, we, we picked up a pretty significant boar smell. I don't know. I mean, if if you guys have smelled it before, you know what I'm talking about, but. You walk, you walk just along and, and a path like this, and all of a sudden you have this strong wild boar smell in your nose. And we looked everywhere, but we couldn't find anything. I'm thinking he crossed the property line and probably peeled over or something on the other side. But anyways, uh, wow, it's, it is coming down quite a bit now. So we had this storm come in. At first, we it was a 30% chance of rain, but then looking at the radar, it's a pretty big system and came just straight down to north uh, Dallas Fort Worth area and um, you guys can hear it it's, it's pretty bad anyways we call it a night for today 11.45 uh, we'll be back here in this pro at this property uh, this coming week uh, so we'll, we'll keep hitting at it and uh, see if we can get a few hawks on the ground Later, dudes. We did go back out the following weekend, but uh, it was also pretty slow. So we decided uh, instead of wasting too much time there, we hop over to our wheat field. And as we walk in, we come across this little danger noodle. So in, in like what in, we've been hunting now for two, three years. Yeah. And I mean, my time for five years now here in, in Texas, it's the second rattlesnake I come across. So we had one in another, uh, just in a grazing field, basically, we came across. And then this tonight, uh, the second one. Yeah, he rattled softly. Without, like, maybe 12, 15, yeah, but you were how far were we away? Maybe 10, 15 feet or yeah. something, right? Maybe pause and... Yeah. Almost sounded like a cricket, right? It was so light. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it was a snake or some bug or something, so... But I'm glad he did. I'd rattle no more. What is it, like two feet? I mean, that's probably six foot. <laughs>
Weather conditions have been pretty challenging this night. Um, you can see the image is not very good. Um, little contrast, fairly washed out. Uh, we had too much rain recently, so high humidity, high temperatures, and all of our equipment, including ourselves, is getting wet from the dew. So we just finished another night here, um, uh, actually next to that new property we just went out last weekend. Yeah. So last weekend we, you know, we took some drone footage and uh, um, put some corn down and whatnot and did one hunt uh, that evening. We had one boar come through yeah. that actually we, we were able to uh, call in with the HP bullet. And I think the sound I was running was boar magnet. Mm -hmm. or at least it was the last one I ran uh, that evening and uh, he came in uh, kind of like in between those those berms yeah. and uh, took a shot um, it sounded like a hit but he, he took off uh, probably cross property line so um, we did look for him but that place also being called the rattlesnake farm yeah we didn't uh, we didn't we'll take go, any chances. go too far in the, in the thick brush so um, but we you know we looked for him probably for 20 30 minutes or so that night uh, ended right there. We had some storms moving in from the north, uh, so we called it good that night. But um, back out uh, in the field right next to it now, um, we started the night in the other wheat field. Yeah, right. The main one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had uh, quite a few sounders. Oh, one big sounder, I guess. Well, yeah, maybe some three or four small ones. A yeah. couple alone. A young sound and one boar as well. And I guess the first group, uh, the first group we went after was was two boars, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and Jin was uh, with us, and uh, you, Micah, were shooting at the left one. Jin and I, you were aiming at the one on the right. Um, at first, I thought he was just getting away, but uh, I was looking for actually another saw later. But I found that boar, so he actually just laid right at, at the uh, the fence line and the way that property is they just kind of disappear behind those little hills yeah. but uh, all in all we, we're finishing this night here with seven um, they're all over the trailer we didn't feel like making it look all pretty because it's right but four a.m. Five, four. four a.m. it's a, it's four a late night tonight yeah. so um, didn't want to mess with it I'm trenched um, yeah. it's super humid yeah. I don't know yeah. probably Very. would have to check my phone but it's got to be close to 100 percent and everything is just <clears throat> Uh, getting dew on it I'm and uh, yeah, Soaked. I was wearing my rubber boots to keep my f feet dry, but then uh, I was sweating so much that 
<laughs> but anyway, so that maybe make a difference. Um, well, seven, seven here. You took a, a pretty good bore over there, right? Yeah. Um, that was a pretty good shot. I appreciate you guys letting me have that because uh, I wasn't sure I made any hits up until that point tonight. <laughs> no, I mean the first <laughs> shots, but <laughs> yeah, the first one we went after. I'm pretty sure both of us hit. Um, uh, I saw that he had a, a wound further in the front towards the snout, and then uh, um, one of us must have hit him somewhere where you know he expired eventually. But um, yeah, that ball over the other was good. It was a pretty good shot in the neck area, shoulder, uh, and then dropped dropped right away. I mean, but we didn't we didn't drag him over here, so he's still over there. It's uh, hard to get him from there. But uh, so we have seven. Uh, six on the trailer, one over there, and then probably two or three not recovered. Yeah. Um, I made a pretty far shot, maybe 200 yards to the last group we shot at. Yeah. Um, and and you even heard him, right? Yeah. Um, it, just, it was discouraging because that wheat field, we've had so much rain this year. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that weed is, but that blade is, blade of grass is similar to the a wheat yeah. grass. Very difficult to see. Once yeah. they fall, I mean, they can be right there on you and you just can't see them. Yeah, everything is getting pretty tall. But um, yeah, that last group we shot, I mean, must have been 200 yards or so. And I heard two thumbs, so it sounded like two hits, but yeah. they did. I definitely heard your shot make that thump yeah. con confirmation, but the second one, I, I let off the uh, shot. But I thought I heard it too, but yeah. anyways. Well, we, uh, we are going to call that a night. Um, so we had those three nights. The first one we had also seven, right? I think so, yeah. Seven yeah. in the wheat field and then uh, um, now those those seven, actually probably ten and then uh, last week in that one. So yeah. not bad for three weekends, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm getting tired of the heat and the humidity yeah. and the rain. <laughs> um, all the weeds, you know, growing like crazy because we have, we had a pretty wet uh, May and June now and yeah. You know, it's tough. Anyways, well, thank you guys for watching again, and uh, we'll we'll keep on working those hogs weekend after weekend. Yeah. All right. Texas yacht. Good job.